The 4th of July video shares one set of readings that's appropriate for this weekend, and I may talk about one or two of those during the sermon segment on the Sunday worship videos. But these are the readings for the Sunday that falls on or between July 3rd and 9th. The Genesis reading continues the stories of Abraham's family, and in particular, this one is the story of arranging a marriage for Isaac. That story concludes with these lines. Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent, and he took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Psalm 145 could be considered um, a celebration of a marriage. It's entitled A Song for the Marriage of a King, and we do see some, some possible connection with the story of Isaac in that respect. It could also be allegorized and used as some kind of an analogy for Christ's relationship to the church. There's also these lines in the psalm that to me seem to point to um, what we remember about Christ's birth. The Tyrians come with gifts, and the richest of people will do you homage. That's verse 12 of Psalm 45. In that, we think of the story of the three wise men who came bringing gifts from afar. So, there'd be another way of approaching this text. Turning to the prophet Zechariah, the other track, you find recognition here as well. This, uh, this passage from Zechariah was used as one of the bases for the, the text of Handel's oratorio called The Messiah. And we recognize it as the passage to which the gospel writers were referring in talking about the triumphal entry. Zechariah 9, verses 9 through 12. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, daughter of Jerusalem. Look, your king comes to you. Vindicated and victorious is he, humble, riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off chariots from Ephraim, wild horses from Jerusalem. The battle bow will be cut off, and he will speak peace to the nations. His rule will be from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. And you too, because of your covenant, I have set free your prisoners from the waterless pit. To the stronghold will the prisoners of hope return. This day I declare, I will restore double to you. Originally, the prophet was, um, was thinking about the return of exiles, returning to um, Israel, uh, re returning to their homeland, and um, looking for a time when there would be a righteous king, a descendant of David again. Psalm 145, verses 8 through 14. The Lord is full of grace and compassion, patient and rich in loving kindness. The Lord is good to all the world and his compassion over everything that he has made. All your works give you thanks, O Lord, and you are blessed by those who love you. They shall speak of your glorious kingdom, and they shall go on with many stories of your might, making known to everyone your mighty acts and the glorious majesty of your kingdom. Yours is a kingdom that lives through all ages. Through all generations extends your dominion. The Lord upholds all who fall. He lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look in hope to you, and you give them their food in due season. There is a potential connection between this psalm and the gospel lesson. Lifting up those who are bowed down, uh, Jesus speaks of um, the easy yoke, as we will see in just a few moments. The reading from Romans 7 is probably to be classed among those to which the letter of Peter was referring when it said, Paul wrote many things that are difficult to understand. 
this certainly would rank right up there with it. And so what I have done today is my own paraphrase of this passage. Um, I think everyone would do well to read it from multiple translations and try to make some sense of it in that way. And I have made some suggestions about how you might do that, including a website called Bible Gateway, where you can actually set several translations up in parallel and say, what in the world does that mean? And you can compare them one with another. So this is my paraphrase of this passage. Sometimes I don't understand myself. I end up doing the very things I don't want to do, the things I hate, things that are wrong. My mind knows the difference between right and wrong, but other urges are at work within me. We're not strictly rational beings. So who am I really? Am I what I think and believe, or am I how I act and live? I'm suggesting that when we know what is right and we find ourselves unable to perform, then something else has us enslaved. As shorthand, let's call that something sin. Sin has us in bondage, and it has its way with us, keeping us from living the righteousness that we would like to embody. Or think of this. Have you ever tried, really tried, to do something good only to have it blow up in your face? I think we all have. That is sin at work. Sin is at war with us in our daily living and in our minds and in our bodies. We are prisoners of this war. So how do we escape this concentration camp? God has done the work of rescuing us in Christ Jesus. So, we can serve God in thought and mind and heart, even though sin seems to be exacting a daily toll. My paraphrase of Romans chapter 7, verses 15 through 25. And then, from Matthew chapter 11, To what will I compare the present generation, Jesus said. It's like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to their playmates. We played the flute for you, but you didn't dance. We've wailed and you didn't mourn. When John came, neither eating nor drinking, people said, he has a demon. Now the Son of Man has come, eating and drinking, and they say, here's a glutton and a wine drinker, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Wisdom is vindicated by her actions. And at that same time, Jesus also offered these words, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that though you've hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you've revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, I thank you that this has seemed very good to you. Everything's been committed to me by my Father, nor does anyone fully know the Son except the Father, or fully know the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son may choose to reveal him. Come to me, all of you who toil and are burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I am humble and gentle, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.